There is a family of diseases that's quite rare. The leukodystrophies. Lorenzo has one of them. It's called ALD. What ALD is, is an inborn error of metabolism that causes a degeneration of the brain. It only affects males, usually between the ages of five and ten. Its progress is relentless. The end is inevitable. All boys with ALD die, usually within two years of diagnosis. And there are no exceptions. I am so sorry. Uh, are you absolutely sure? Yes. Lorenzo shows the definitive sign. He has an abnormally high level of fats in his blood, certain very long chain saturated fats. Uh, these fats uh, destroy his brain. But, but how? Well, there is an enzyme that should metabolize these fats, but in ALD boys it's defective. So they collect in the nerve cells, a little bit like uh, cholesterol in the arteries. And in some way, this liquefies the white matter of the brain. Some way liquefies? Could you be more specific? Well, to be honest, we're not quite certain just how it works. Um, you know what myelin is? Hmm. Myelin is the fatty sheath that insulates the nerves. It's a little bit like plastic around electrical wires. Without it, the nerves cannot conduct an impulse. What ALD does is strip away the myelin. It corrodes it, if you like. This causes degeneration of the brain, and as the brain degenerates, the body loses its functions. But surely someone somewhere must be working on this, no? We would go anywhere. Yes. The problem is that 10 years ago, this disease hadn't even been identified. We're still trying to understand just what it is. I would like to offer you some hope, but... Then there, there's absolutely no treatment. You know, normally at this point, we try to be constructive, we try to focus on what can be done. But in this case... <laughs> Ten weeks after diagnosis, we observe a hemianopia with transient, horizontal nystagmus. The pupillary light reflexes are still intact, and as yet there's no optic atrophy. However, there is evidence of early occipital... That's right. Hold my hands. That's right. Two months ago, there was simply fine motor lag. Now note the characteristic gait. It's due mostly to hyperreflexia, but exacerbated by the encroaching paresis. You're doing very well, Lorenzo. Keep coming. Only if you stop talking like that. <laughs> I want to take Lorenzo off the diet. He's been eating cardboard for 19 weeks, and what's it getting us? And feed them what? Well, hmm? Normal foods, things a child likes. Full of the long chain fats that we know destroy his myelin. Hmm? Look. On the diet, his blood fats are still rising. Yes, I know, Mickey. Well, it doesn't make any sense. I know, but, uh, but we don't know enough. We don't know enough. We don't know it clearly enough. Mm. Here, Michaela, let me show you something. All right. Un piccolo acquaio. The kitchen sink? Yes, yes, in the kitchen sink. All right. 
Now, here is the tap, mm -hmm. and here's the sink basin and the plug hole, right? All right. Very long chain saturated fats are reintroduced by what we eat, all right? Yes. Now, also produced by the body or manufactured by the body, these very same fats. Biosynthesis. Biosynthesis, right. All right. Now, normally, they are not harmful because this enzyme eliminates the excess, right? But in Lorenzo, this enzyme is defective from genetics. His plug hole is blocked, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, we know that very long chain saturated fats are made up of carbon atoms. See, two, four, six, eight, all the way up the chain, right? right. In Lorenzo, his saturated C24 and C26 rise to four times the normal level. Okay, now. Here's where we have a little paradox or mystery, okay? Why, when we reduce the dietary intake of saturated fats, does the level in our sink, which we would expect to go down, go up? Hmm? So, logically, we should take him off the diet. Polish rats. I think I have an explanation for the paradox. Lorenzo, kiss your clever mother. <clears throat> Polish rats with a fatty acid storage disease. Here, let me use your kitchen sink. Here's our tap for what we eat. All right. And here's our tap for biosynthesis. I see, biosynthesis. Mm -hmm. When the rats were deprived of a specific fat in their diet, mm -hmm. their body cells compensated by overproducing it. Well, if this holds true for humans... Then uh, the diet is useless unless we can stop it from overproducing. Slow down biosynthesis, see? Yes, yes. And there's more in for this. I deserve two kisses, my darling. In the summary, it talks about the concept of fatty acid manipulation. What's that? Well, they stop the rats producing one kind of fat by loading their diet with another kind. So maybe we could stop Lorenzo's body from producing saturated C24 and C26 mm -hmm. by loading his diet with another kind of fat. You know, one that's less, less harmful. Michaela, we should have this translated as soon as possible. I'm busy making monounsaturates. It distracts it from elongating the saturation. Right. Yes, so so we have a way to trick nature. Yes, it's a principle called competitive inhibition. Right. So, Gus, Gus, you think it's a reasonable hypothesis? Oh, I think it's more. What you've done is to clarify the biochemical pathway. Augusto, I really want to congratulate you. Th this would explain why oleic acid is only partly successful. Yes, it's C18, you see. It's too low down in the chain. Right, right. So, we add a second barrier. We block the bad guys further up the chain. They, they saturate further up the chain between C22 and C24. There, we stop the bloody things completely. And how'd you do that? By adding monounsaturated C22. But that's erucic acid. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly.